Hi and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make some desert scatter for your desert terrain. If you take a look here I'm going to give you a little preview ahead of time so you can see what we're going to be up to in this video. So take a seat, let's get going and I'm going to show you how it's done. See you in a little bit. Bye! Supplies are listed in the description below. To get things started, what you first want to do is get a hold of some cereal box cardboard. And basically what you want is to trace out various shapes that sort of are concentric upon each other. So if you take a look here, these are the patterns that I created just using some freeform shapes that reminded me of the type of desert plateau terrain that I was seeing in pictures that I was using as reference. Now, it does help to label these because if you don't, it can get confusing really fast. For my own sanity, I just did letter with a number next to it and that helped keep me organized as I went through this project. So a little tip for you there. The other thing to keep in mind is that since we are going to be using double corrugated cardboard as well as the foam core, it does help to know what their widths are naturally. So with foam core, it's about a quarter of an inch. Depending on your corrugated cardboard, it can be anywhere between an eighth of an inch up to a quarter of an inch as well. Knowing this will help you decide how many stacks of each pattern size you want to make. For some of them, I did two. Some of them I did up to five. Again, play around with the height that you want to have in the end, as well as the number of each of these trace patterns you're going to want. And in the long run, what I did is I basically just peeled the first layer of paper off the foam core, laid out my patterns, and I traced them out with a ballpoint pen. Make sure you're not pressing too deeply. And this just let me use most of the foam core to the best of my ability without too much waste, but get out all the shapes and sizes that I needed for the various bits of terrain scatter. When you have everything laid out and traced, what you then want to do is take a very sharp utility knife and cut out these pieces. You may find it helps to take smaller strokes uh, to cut away certain areas first before you start cutting into the shape itself. You might want to play around a little bit first trying to cut out curves before you actually start cutting out your patterns, but this is the best way to do it. Now a tip when you are creating these concentric patterns, make sure you have spaces where minis could stand. So give it some space here and there. You don't want it to be a conical shape or something where it's more like a funnel. You want to give these ledges and ridges and openings so that your minis can actually be placed on these pieces. With all of your pieces now cut out, you do want to make sure that you start removing the back paper that was left behind and then group these into piles of like with like. So all my A1s got put together, all my A2s and so on and so forth. You also want to make sure you have at hand on ready a traditional glue stick as well as double corrugated cardboard. One thing I do like to do to the foam core before putting the glue on it is I'll rough up the side that's going to go up against the cardboard. Then make sure you just press it onto the cardboard, give it a little wiggle and that's going to make sure the glue really spreads out and holds it in place and a little rule of thumb here is when you're assembling these pieces together what you want to make sure you do is keep the stacks to about no more than three pieces of foam core high you want to get that reinforcement of the cardboard in between should you have stacks that are four to five to so on pieces of foam core stacked up upon each other so in this case i made sure that i had my two a1s on the cardboard first and then I'd have two other A1s left over that would need to be placed on top of them once they dried. Now for the next steps you want to kind of think about building up a layer cake. What you're going to do is take your hot glue gun and make sure it's your low temp hot glue gun. You're going to put hot glue onto the pieces that are still free floating and then place them on top of the ones that are on the cardboard. You do want to make sure that the ones that are on the cardboard have dried though. Don't do anything before that has happened. Once you know everything has cooled and dried, you want to take your utility knife again and cut away the excess cardboard around the edges of your pieces. And then once you have all of that done, you're going to start hot gluing the concentric pieces one on top of the other, as you can see here in this photo. And what this does is it starts creating that layered effect that you see in these scatter pieces of the actual terrain in a desert. And it just gives you a really neat effect right from the word go. So that's how you get these pieces pulled together. Let's keep moving on. 
At this point, you have a few options as to what you want to do to enhance and give texture to these pieces. You can take a utility knife and you can start beveling edges. The other thing you can do is take nail files and file down areas to give them more of a rounded, sloped off look. You can even take some sandpaper and take that, make sure it's a very fine grit, and take that just to sort of smooth out some edges as you move around the piece itself. However, when you're using this method, make sure you do have protective eyewear on, as well as something like a paint mask for respiratory safety. The other things you can use to help give texture are things like a stencil brush. I find this very handy for adding texture to the top levels. And then you can also use a wire brush. What I used the wire brush for especially was to go around the edges of each of these to add in those extra grooves that you will see in the layered rock. Finally, what you can do is take some fish gravel and you can put that onto the edges where there's a little bit of peaks coming out here and there to make it look like there's some stones that have broken off and fallen onto the ledges. Once you have your texture added in, what you then want to do is take your hot glue gun and where there is double corrugated cardboard, just put a nice bead of hot glue around that area to close off the holes that naturally occur in the double corrugation. For your base coat, you want Mod Podge matte and you're going to mix in two parts of that with one part burnt umber acrylic paint and you're going to paint your pieces. This means the top, the sides and around the edges, everything like that. Now you know you're doing this right if everything ends up looking like something where you need to take care of your pooch after going for a walk. Uh, in the end, it's going to dry out and it's going to be more of a matte tone. Don't worry about the shininess that first happens and hopefully you'll end up something that looks more like a layered chocolate cake. Let's move on to how we get the paint going on these. Whenever it's a matter of deciding on colors for terrain, what I tend to do is go and search actual pictures to get an idea of what this looks like. So I did a search on Desert Plateau and these are the photos that I used as inspiration for how I wanted to go about painting in the colors and the details for these pieces. The other thing I found out while doing this is that there are different names for these things. So something that looks long and narrow, that's a fin. If it's more wide and rounded off, it's a hoodoo. H-O-O-D-O-O, -O -O. and then finally you have your natural land bridges. But it was the striations and the weathering and just the color blends that I really wanted to capture. So I always recommend do go and get some points of reference of photos if you're looking to create some terrain and you can't quite decide on the colors you want to use. Now let's move on to the painting itself. Here are the colors I used for my scatter pieces. So we're starting off with Deep Coral from Craftsmart as well as Butter from Craftsmart. Then you're going to get Folk Arts Coffee Latte and onto Apple Barrel Sunkissed Peach and Antique White. So these are the five colors I'm going to use through this step of the process. What you want to do now is get a nice wide brush and here's the fun thing, you don't have to be neat about this. You're going to first start with that deep coral and you're basically going to take your brush, dip it into the paint and drag it across the sides of your pieces and you try and keep everything at about the same level as you can see here in the picture. Then what you want to do is move on to the color butter, same idea, drag it around the edges and you can actually blend a little bit into each other too. And then the last color you're going to do with this technique is the coffee latte. So as you can see here, you get this layering effect, but again, I encourage you to be messy about this. You don't want exact lines. You want this feathered out. You want these blending into each other because it gives you more the look that you will see in these natural formations. Finally, what you're going to do is take that sunkissed peach and you're going to dry brush, but you're going to drag it down from top to bottom of the piece just to bring out the texture of everything that you've put in before. Allow this to dry and then what you want to do is move on to taking a brown wash, which I'll have a recipe in the description below for you, and you're going to put this onto your pieces. Now, when applying this wash, you wanna make sure that your pieces are lying so that everything is facing up. This is going to allow the wash to sink into the nooks and crannies, and you may find it helps to do one side, then flip it over to the other side and do the wash on that side. Again, just to make sure that wash kind of sets in nicely. Do make sure the wash dries completely before moving on. Now we're going to add on the weathering streaks that you'll find on these formations and you're going to go back to the sunkissed peach as well as the antique white. So first taking the sunkissed peach again with a wider brush, what you're going to do is drag the color of that 
down in a dry brush technique, but you wanna make sure you're not lining it up next to each other. This is just random draggings across the sides of each of these pieces and along the top parts to bring out more of that texture at the top part of each of these pieces. And once you've done that with the Sunkissed Peach, move on to the Antique White, same thing. You're going to dry brush drag from top to bottom in random areas, this particular color, and this is gonna help create that weathering effect that happens when the stone is exposed to rain and you get the buildup of minerals along the edges of these terrain pieces. Now, while this step is technically optional, I do find it enhances the look of these. Now, while we do think desert absolutely nothing growing, there are plants that are out there in the desert. So what I wanted to do is incorporate some bits of pre-made grass pieces that I had on hand, as well as aquarium plant pieces that I had on hand to use as the types of plants you would find in the desert. So the grass pieces, I just kind of tucked in little random areas. You can even put them so it looks like they're growing out of the rock. And then what I did is I took this particular style of aquarium plant, and I'll make sure I can find a link for you and put it below, and then just kind of cut it up so it ended up looking more like a cactus-like plant, sort of like an aloe plant or that type of effect. So by doing different heights of this particular aquarium plant and then scattering around the grasses, it also gives you a look of these plants just kind of making it as best they can out in the desert. Uh, there was also another aquarium plant that I like to use because that kind of gave it that succulent vine look as well. So my advice here is basically just play around with it a little bit. You don't want to make this lush and full foliage. We're in the desert, that's not gonna happen. But little bits of pops of color here and there will make all the difference again to make this look more like what it truly looks like out in the desert area. For the land bridge itself, I didn't make a different pattern for this. What I did was actually go back to the patterns I had already created for the other pieces and mix them together to get the desired look that I wanted. So I recommend you do the same because it kind of gives nod to what you've done before, but it also gives it its own unique look. You just want to make sure that basically you have two end pieces that are wider and rounder and a longer narrow top piece that you can use as a cap between the two. And it really does come out looking like a land bridge, which was quite effective. So play around with your shapes and sizes and it's the same building technique as you saw for the other pieces. And now it's time for our final look and I did purposely put some minis on here in the still shots so that you could see what it looks like when they are actually on there. And the cool thing about these pieces is that they are extremely interactive. It's something where you can have your players make use of the different levels, make use of the height and make use of the layout that you plot using these pieces of scatter. Have fun with it, enjoy the process of it. Don't get too worked up about being exact because it's actually in the not being exact that you get this look that is the most natural effect in the long run. So have fun with these, do different shapes. You can even make a couple of the same shapes and just sort of rotate them around from each other and it's gonna look like a completely different piece. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to ask me down below, or you can contact me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. While you're here, if you'd like to, please make sure to hit that like button, and you're welcome to subscribe as well. That's it for me for today, and I'll have another video up for you probably within the next week. Take care. This is what happens when you're super pale. You spend more time getting the lighting right than the actual filming. Because right now, I'm like cocoon mode. Just flare! Fun times. Okay, now I just feel like I'm in the fiery depths of hell. I got my new ring light, so I'm playing around with it, but the, uh, the warm light filter? I feel like I need a list of your sins right now. No.